Wisdom be attentive. Save your people, O Lord, and bless your inheritance, and bless your inheritance. To you, o Lord, I cry out, my God, be not silent to me. Save your people, O St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. Let us be attentive. Brothers and sisters, God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts that we in turn might make known the glory of God shining on the face of Christ. This treasure we possess in earth, earthen vessels to make it clear that its surpassing power comes from God and not from us. We are afflicted in every way possible, but we are not crushed, full of doubts we never despair. We are persecuted but never abandoned, we are struck down but never destroyed. Continually we carry about in our bodies the dying of Jesus, so that in our bodies the life of Jesus may also be revealed. While we live, we are constantly being delivered to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our mortal flesh. Death is at work in us, but life in you. We have that spirit of faith of which the scripture says, Because I believed, I spoke out. We believe and so we speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will raise us up along with Jesus and place both us and you in his presence. Indeed, everything is ordered to your benefit, so that the grace bestowed in abundance may bring greater glory to God, because they who give thanks are many. Wisdom be attentive. Alleluia. 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 The one who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides in the shadow of the God of heaven. God, through the prayers of the holy, glorious, and illustrious apostle and evangelist Matthew, grant that you proclaim the word with great power for the fulfillment of the gospel of his beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Wisdom, let us stand and listen to the holy gospel. Peace be with all. Turn to your spirit. A reading from the holy gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord, glory to you. Let us be attentive. At that time a certain lawyer asked Jesus, Teacher, which commandment of the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. The second is like it. 
you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments the whole law is based, and the prophets as well. In turn, Jesus put a question to the assembled Pharisees. What, in your opinion, about the Messiah? Whose son is he? David's, they answered. He said to them, Then how is it that David, under the Spirit's influence, calls him Lord as he does? The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I humble your enemies at your feet. If David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could give him an answer. Therefore no one dared from that day on to ask him any questions. Glory to you. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In God's wonderful plan for our salvation, he has seen to work out the ordinary ministry of his church with broken vessels. It's so that God's glory shines forth so that all the greatness is seen to be his, that the ministry of the church is put into the hands of rather ordinary men and women, broken, fallen, sinful, imperfect, growing, that God's grace comes and fills in what is lacking and heals what is infirm. Indeed, the glory and the greatness is all God's to whom we give worship and adoration. We also properly glorify the Mother of God, the Theotokos. We gather at this pilgrimage under her special protection. She is our help. She is our protection. She is our salvation. Yes, interceding before the Master in our behalf, she provides constant help and protection. And because of her yes, because of her full and perfect assent to the will of God, she brings God to us in the flesh so that we may have life with him for all eternity. Indeed, she is our salvation. She is the perfect vessel. She is the perfect temple. She is the all pure one who shows us to the master. And yet we are not. And so at this opening divine liturgy, at the pilgrimage in honor of Our Lady of Perpetual Help, when in a special way we offer petitions for an increase of vocations to serve the church in the priesthood, in the diaconate, and in the consecrated life, we are very mindful that this ministry can happen for the good of our souls because of God's grace and the intercession of his most pure mother. We have our seminarians singing and serving this morning from the Byzantine Catholic Seminary and Pittsburgh. And our work is all about discernment and formation, trying to discover in the course of a man's time with us the will of God, trying to help the man be formed recognizing all of us are broken into the kind of vessel that God needs for the work of his church. 
Now sometimes if we ever watch a scientific or science fiction, I should say, movie or program of some sort, we all know about the vessels where the person loses um, his, own, his own will and his own sense and mindfulness and is taken over. That is not the kind of vessel we are talking about here. God works through the fullness of our humanity, making it perfect because God comes to us in human nature and allowing mere human beings to do, to do divine work. Of course, this work is based in, motivated by, finds its strength and grace in the love of God. And in this morning's gospel reading, we hear about the greatest of the commandments, love of God, love of neighbor, and implied there also is love of self. Love of self. We're not talking here about narcissism. But we're also talking about a love of self that recognizes that despite our brokenness, despite our fallenness, God does not abandon. God stays with us. He fills our soul with his Holy Spirit, making us temples, making the brokenness of our vessels something useful for the work of the church, for one another, for the love of God, and for our own salvation. And so indeed, in the seminary, we learn about all the mystery of God's love for us. We learn what service to others means, how we do godly work for the sake of others in reaching out to those in need with material needs, but certainly with spiritual needs as well. And it's important in the seminary that we each find a proper sense of self-respect and esteem that yes, indeed, we love ourselves, recognizing this because of God's love for us and what God gives us in the beauty of our humanity. Today we celebrate the memory of the cousin of Mary, the mother of God, her cousin Elizabeth, her husband, the holy prophet Zachary, these are the parents of the holy prophet and forerunner, John the Baptist. And as Zachary, in offering incense in the temple, takes some time to come to a more perfect faith in the plan of God, <coughs> in the conception of his son, John the Baptist, and the plan to keep him hidden and safe, that he not suffer the fate of the holy innocence in his earliest years, but that he live to prepare the way of the Lord, that he live to preach the message of repentance, of conversion. And so those of us in the ministry of the church seek to do the same, to guide people, to lead people, to point them on a path of salvation, to call to repentance when necessary, but recognizing that brokenness that is in each of us, ourselves in the ministry of the church, turning back to God in repentance, working on our own growth in perfection. And so as we pray in a special way at this divine liturgy, for an increase of men to respond to the call to be church leaders as priests, for men to respond to the call to serve and assist in the church as ordained deacons, and for men and women to respond to the call to serve in the consecrated life as sisters and brothers, nuns and monks. Let us not be held back in our petitioning by only praying for those who seem perfect to us, those who seem to have no sin, 
those who seem to have no growth areas. Perhaps we are concerned when we are looking at somebody who we think might have potential to serve the church and they think of themselves as perfect and sinless and without growth areas. We really can't do much for people of that sort in a formation program. But we do continue our prayers and see that it is God who makes for these broken vessels what they need to be for the sake of the church. Let us, praying to the most pure mother of God, our lady of perpetual help, John the Baptist and his parents, holy Zachary and Elizabeth, ask that God continue to strengthen those who discern with proper guidance, proper formation, and a recognition that God makes beautiful the vessels for the salvation of the world. Most Holy Theotokos, save us. Let us all say with our whole soul and with our whole mind, let us say, Lord of mercy, O Lord Almighty God of our fathers, we pray you here and have mercy, Lord of mercy, have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray you here and have mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord Again, we pray for our Holy Father, Francis, Pope of Rome, and for our most reverend Metropolitan, William, for the God-loving Bishop Kurt, for those who serve and have served in this Holy Church, for our spiritual fathers, and for all our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our government and for all in the service of our country. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the people here present who await a great and abundant mercy, for those who show us mercy, and for all Christians of the true faith. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. For your merciful light, God, and we give glory to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and
Metropolitan William, the God-loving Bishop Kurt, and the entire priestly, diaconal, and monastic order, our government, and all in the service of our country, and the ever-memorable founders and benefactors of this holy church place, may the Lord God remember all you Christians of the true faith, always, now, and ever, and forever. Also, the prayer of us sinners, bring us to your holy altar. Enable us to offer you gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins and for the people's failings. Make us worthy to find favor in your sight, that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you, and that the good spirit of your grace may rest on us on these gifts here present and on all your people. Grant this through the mercies of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, good, and life creating spirit now and ever and forever. Amen. Peace be with all. And to your spirit. Let us love one another, that with one mind we may profess. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, the only begotten, born of the Father before all ages, light from light to God from with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered.
Son and your Holy Spirit, you brought us out of non-existence into being and again raised us up when we had fallen and left nothing undone until you brought us to heaven and gave us your kingdom to come. For all this we thank you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit for all that we know and that we do not know for the manifest and hidden benefits bestowed on us. We also thank you for this liturgy which you are pleased to accept from our hands even though there stand before you thousands of archangels, tens of thousands of angels, cherubim and seraphim, six-winged, many-eyed, soaring aloft on their wings, singing, shouting, crying aloud, and saying the triumphal hymn. Son and your Holy Spirit. Holy are you and all holy and magnificent is your glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son so that everyone who believes in him should not perish but have life everlasting. He came and fulfilled the whole divine plan in our behalf on the night he was betrayed or rather when he surrendered himself for the life of the world. He took bread into his holy and all pure and immaculate hands, gave thanks and blessed sanctified, broke, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. Amen. Likewise, he took the chalice after supper, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. this saving command and all that has come to pass in our behalf. The cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the sitting at the right hand, the second coming in glory, offering you your own from your own, always and everywhere. We praise you.
offer, we offer to you this spiritual and then bloody sacrifice, and we implore, pray, and entreat you. Send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts lying before us, and make this bread the precious body of your Christ, and that which is in this chalice the precious blood of your Christ, changing them by your Holy Spirit, that for those who partake of them, they may bring about a spirit of vigilance, the remission of sins, the communion of your Holy Spirit, the fullness of the heavenly kingdom and confidence in you, not judgment or condemnation. Moreover, we offer you this spiritual sacrifice for those departed in faith, the forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and for every just spirit brought to perfection in faith, especially for our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary. It is truly proper to glorify you, O Theotokos, the ever-blessed, immaculate, and the Mother of our God, more honorable than the cherubim, and beyond compare more glorious Seraphim, who a virgin gave birth to God the Word, to truly the Theotokos we magnify. Among the first, O Lord, remember our Holy Father, Francis, Pope of Rome, our most reverend Metropolitan William, our God-loving Bishop Kurt, Preserve them for your holy churches in peace, safety, honor, and health for many years, as they faithfully impart the word of your truth. And remember all your people. Remember, O Lord, this city in which we dwell, and every city and community and the faithful living in them. Remember, O Lord, those who travel by sea, air, and land, the sick, the suffering, the captive, and grant them salvation. Remember, O Lord, those who bring offerings and perform good deeds in your holy churches, and those who remember the poor and upon all of us send down your mercies. Remember, O Lord, those who discern are being called, are being formed for, and are serving in the ministries of priesthood, diaconate, and in the consecrated life. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honored and magnificent name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. May the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. Now that we have commemorated all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the precious gifts offered and consecrated, that our God, who loves us all, may receive them on his holy, heavenly, and mystical altar, as an aroma of spiritual fragrance, and send down upon us in return his divine grace, and the gift of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Lord, have mercy. That we be delivered from all affliction, wrath, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Protect us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. That this whole day be perfect, holy, peaceful, and without sin, let us beseech the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide and guardian of our souls and bodies, let us beseech the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For the pardon and remission of our sins and offenses, let us beseech the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For what is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world, let us beseech the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. That we may spend the rest of our life in peace and repentance, let us beseech the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For a Christian, painless, unashamed, peaceful end of our life, and for a good account before the fearsome judgment seat of Christ, let us beseech the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. Asking for unity in the faith and for communion of the Holy Spirit, 
Let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. To you, O Master, who love us all, we commit our whole life and hope, and we implore, pray, and entreat you. Make us worthy to partake with a clear conscience of your heavenly and awesome mysteries from this sacred and spiritual table. May they bring about the remission of sins, the pardon of transgressions, the communion of the Holy Spirit, the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, confidence in you, not judgment or condemnation. And make us worthy, O Master, that we may with confidence and without condemnation dare call you Father, God of heaven, and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Peace be with all. And to your spirit. Bow your heads to the Lord. To you, O Lord. We give you sad, invisible, came for by measurable power you have fashioned on since the greatness of your mercy. Have brought all sins of our non existence to be. Look down from heaven, O Master, and bow those who bow their heads to you. For they do not bow to flesh and blood, but to us and God. The four, O Master, may spoke for the good of all the path, the lake again according to it. Sell be souls who sail, travel be souls who travel, curse or sick of physician souls' bodies. Through the grace, the mercy, and kindness of only begotten Son, is all we are blessed together with the Holy Good, my granting spirit, now and ever and forever. Merciful to be a sinner. 
God, cleanse me of my sins, have mercy on me. O Lord, forgive me, for I have sinned without number. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, from the heavens, praise Him in the highest, praise Him in the highest, alleluia. Approach with fear of God and with faith. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord is God and has revealed him. 